Welcome back to the Power of Teen America podcast. This is the preview show for Power of Teen America Nationals that's coming up this week, February 24th, 5th, and 6th in Austin, Texas. We have covered session one and session two, and we're on to session three now, which is the 63 kilo women and the 69 kilo women. So this will be a great session. This is a, a session that's going to be kind of like a prime time. It'll be starting at 2 p.m. Um, on Saturday, so everyone should be free and able to tune in. Uh, to the SBD Apparel live stream on their YouTube account. And already SBD has put up the thumbnails and everything. So you can go on to their, if you search SBD Apparel on YouTube, you'll go in there um, and you can already subscribe to the channels and get notifications. It'll also be on the Power of Teen America on the live page of the Power of Teen America homepage. So you'll be able to find it there. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get right into these weight classes. Wait, do we have a, some breaking news, Sam, that you wanted to tell us before we get going? <laughs> Uh, yes, Jesus Alvarez just squatted 1,025 pounds in training today, uh, literally just right before we started this podcast. Um, absolutely Holy insane. Shit. I can't wait to see what he squats at Sheffield. Holy shit, 1025, that is wild. That is a huge, huge squat. Would that be the world record then? Um, Let's I see. believe, the is the world record still raised from the Arnold? Yes, I think it is. Yeah. But I mean, he's he's getting pretty close. He keeps taking massive steps between PRs. So, yeah. All right. Well, that's pretty awesome. Um, all right. So, breaking news: Jesus Oliveras. It's not really news. He's like pretty much the strongest person in the world. <laughs> um, but he's looking pacing really well to put up something crazy at Sheffield. Is what it looks like. So his trainings looks like it's going great. But all right, let's get back to powerlifting American Nationals. The preview show, um, we got Julia Williams, 63 kilo lifter that'll be lifting in this session that we're about to talk about. Uh, we got Marcus McFadden, an 83 kilo sub junior problem child for Power of Teen America. And we've got Sam Sikora over here, a, a big 105, also a junior college at University of Michigan. And he'll be going to University Nationals and then hopefully on to University Cup at the IPF level to represent the uh, US University team. So this is our panel, and we're going to talk about the 63s. And uh, for the 63s, what is the qualifying total for this for this weight class? Do you know, Julia? Yeah, so it's 518.5. Okay, it looks like that's the only number that we're missing in our spreadsheet. 518.5 is the qualifying total. That's the Carpino 1. You'll hear us refer to it as a Carpino 1. It's basically just that the average of the last three years, first place finisher at Worlds. And that number is 518.5. Um, so in this weight class, we're only going to have three lifters lifting. Um, we're going to have the world champion, Meg Scanlon. We're going to have Julia Williams, who you see right here on this podcast, and we'll let her talk about it. And we're going to have Rebecca Logel. On the roster, you'll also see Sophia Camila Ayala. Her Instagram handle is Camila, Camila Ayala. Um, she's a young lifter, and she represented uh, the Team USA, United States, at Junior Worlds this last year. She won Junior Nationals, and uh, she just messaged that she's pulling out for personal reasons, but she will be back, and she will be back at Junior Nationals in Scottsdale in early June. So we'll see her there, and then hopefully she'll make the U.S. national team again, and we'll see her off in, I believe, it's in Romania this year. Um, so mm -hmm. getting into this weight class, um, We've got a heavy favorite, Megan Scanlon. She's totaled 537.5 in the past, um, just this last year at the same meet that Julia was at. So we'll let Julia talk about that. It's a huge total in that weight class. Um, it puts her like in the top five all-time uh, drug-tested women on dots. And, and so definitely she's a reigning world champ, reigning national champion. And it looks like she's only getting stronger since she's won, since she won her national championship. She's basically been training exclusively for powerlifting for about a year now. Um, and before that she was doing a lot of other things, including having twins. Um, and she was doing like a, a super total Olympic lifting, all this kind of stuff. So she, uh, just one year into really focusing on powerlifting only, and her total has gone up a lot. So she's definitely one to watch for, um, we've got Julia in this weight class as well. Um, she's put up a 475 total before at 66 kilos. And, um, if she can get healthy, we know that she'll be up into the fives. And so we'll, she could, she could. We don't know exactly. We'll ask her here in a second, but you know, if she's 100% healthy, she could break into the fives for sure. And then with the third place, most likely third place finisher would be Rebecca Logel. Uh, she's 41 years old. She's got a 330 total. 
and uh, she's only ever done one meet. So it's really cool to see someone entering into the sport at 41 years old. She's signed up for a local meet in Texas. Then she signed up for nationals. And there's a really strong chance. I mean, assuming she doesn't bomb out that she's going to be standing on the podium next to Meg Scanlon and Julia Williams, which is a really cool thing uh, to help kind of grow the sport that people can come in and have that kind of success and, and be on the same stage with these great athletes like Julia and Meg. So it's really cool. All right. So I'll turn it over to, I'll let Julia go ahead and talk about this one first, unless you want to go last, it's up to you. Oh no, I'll go first. Um, okay. so I think, um, Megan Scanlon, you know, I did that qualifying meet with her where she totaled 537.5 and she had more in the tank. Um, you know, her squat and her deadlift looked relatively easy to me. Um, bench is the issue, but she seems to have mitigated that. Um, I mean, I think, you know, bench is going to be a concern in both of these weight classes, um, just seeing how it's going to be called. So, um, that's talking about one the new talking about the new bench rules. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's interesting, you know, like sometimes it's called more strictly, sometimes it's not. Um, but I think she's mitigated everything pretty well. Looks like she's going to come in bench about, uh, you know, 280, possibly 130 kilos. Um, so I think, She's the heavy favorite and she's going to easily hit the Carpino total. Um, myself, I took my heavy deadlift yesterday, as you guys know. Um, after, after we <laughs> made you go on Zoom for like three hours. Yeah. Um, it went okay. Um, I definitely, I have some hip issues and I have some shoulder issues that I'm getting over. So it might not be completely what I'm capable of um, at this meet, but I'm heading towards, I'm heading in the right direction and I should be able to put up something decent. I'm hoping for, you know, 90 range if everything goes well. Um, and then I wanted to shout out Sophia Ayala because I didn't know that she had dropped at the time of this meet and she was hitting some massive, massive numbers. So. I'm excited to see what she puts up at junior nationals. And then we have Rebecca. So um, only one meet in the books, but um, 41 years old. It's always good to see people, um, you know, getting out there and doing the big meets. Um, I think that that's important. I think that's an important part of growing in the sport. And I'm excited to lift with all these ladies. So. Yeah, that would be all right. So you got Meg winning and you got uh, definitely going to hit the Carpino one total. And just one more thing about Sophia Ayala is just that, yeah, she's she's like 19 years old. And um, so that puts her on the low on the one of the youngest competitors um, in the juniors uh, age group. And she already won junior world uh, junior nationals last year and went to world. She already has world level experience. So um, we're all super excited to see that now as she starts to get into the, you know, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old, years old, she could be a serious threat at Junior Worlds going forward. So, all right, let's kick it on over to Sam. Yeah, um, I think, you know, we discussed, I think Meg probably got on lock. Uh, you know, her meet that she did in December in New York, uh, it looked pretty some max. I know she was getting that meet in to be the last meet with the uh, old bench rules. Um, but I think she's adapted pretty well to the bench rule change, uh, it seems. At least she's mentioned that. Uh, and it looks like that's not going to take too much off her total, if anything at all. Um, and that meet was pretty sub -max. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if we see um, her be a little bit of a gamer here, just hit that Carpino just above it, and, uh, you know, hopefully try to secure the class. Um, I would not be shocked by that. Um, and then I think Julia's got um, second lockdown for sure. Um, and then hopefully in the future, we'll see Julia 100% healthy and see what she is uh, fully capable of, which will be exciting. Um, but yeah, I see I see Meg winning this, and I, I think she's going to hit the Carpino and probably going to be pretty close to it intentionally and maybe even leave some in the tank. All right. Good call there. And Marcus? Um, yeah, honestly, couldn't agree more. I feel like uh, I saw the tail end of Meg's lift there at uh, in the Brooklyn meet. Um, because that was the afternoon session there. Um, 
yeah, I feel like I see her hitting the Carpino and I see her kind of, you know, squeezing by. I know that, you know, specifically with the bench rules that she's been adapting over that. And I don't see it having that much of an impact on, you know, her performance here. Um, I do know that, you know, she's coming off of like these really big responsibilities and she's really focusing in on powerlifting. And I am honestly very interested in to see how that's going to affect her, you know, come this year when she's really, you know, honing in on the sport. But, you know, I feel like there's nothing more that can really be said um, that, you know, Julia and Sam haven't already said. Um, I see Meg really just hitting this. Yeah, um, I'm just looking at Meg's Instagram now, and she hit a 195 squat, which would be a five kilo PR. That looked pretty good. Um, she's also, she also hit a 205.5 deadlift, which would also be a 0.5 PR on her deadlift. So like y'all said, you know, her, her meet in Brooklyn, when she put up that big total 537.5, it definitely looked like she had more in the tank on squat, uh, and, and deadlift. The only question will be how the bench is affected. I did ask her today and, uh, I asked her specifically this question about, is she going to go all out or is she just going to secure the Carpino and that's the qualifying total and that's it. And I'll pull up what she said. She said the goal is for sure well above the qualifying total. Um, so the qualifying total, like she's already done well above that. She's that was 518.5. She's done 537 and a half. Um, she says, I, then I asked her, are you going to hit 550? And she said, I wish not in the cards this weekend, but it will be soon. Uh, so <laughs> she's definitely <laughs> on the right track. She's super confident right now. She just, that squat PR was her first squat PR in a long time. Um, I guess like whenever you have quit kids, um, and you go through pregnancy and stuff. The squat is like the last thing to rebound. That's what she's been talking a lot about on her story. And now she's starting to PR her squat. So she's going to be very deadly when she gets that squat going. All right. Well, good calls, uh, all around good analysis. Anyone have anything else you want to say on that? Covered it all. All right. Then let's move on to the 69 kilo weight class here. All right. Here we have a really interesting three-way battle here. Um, so coming in at the top of the class with the biggest total is Claire Zai. She's coming over from USAPL. She did a big meet. She did a meet in Reno and she put up a big total, 527.5 kilo total. The qualifying total in this weight class is 522.5. So of all the competitors in this weight class, Claire is the only one who's put up a total that big. Um, and so she's done 527.5. That was in October and it looks like training is amazing. You know, she's hitting PRs and stuff. So she's, she's going to be good. Um, but we also have Chelsea Savitt in this weight class and Chelsea Savitt is a very experienced veteran that has been competing since 2013. So even though, I mean, she's still pretty young in the sport, she started in the sport very young. And so, um, she's been competing, like I said, since 2013, that's like 10 years in the sport. Um, so and she's making progress. She's training. Um, she just did bench uh, nationals and won that one best lifter. So she's definitely someone that can threaten. We don't know exactly because I don't think she's been posting too many of our top sets. But um, then the, in third place, most likely, um, just based on on their previous totals, is Kelsey McCarthy. Um, she's the reigning equipped world champion. Like she just won Open Worlds back in November. Um, she finished second place at world games in the heavy category. She's an equipped lifter primarily. She has not done a raw meet since 2019. And that's where we got that 480 total. So if you think about it, um, since 2019, she hasn't done it. And she's also come down in a weight class since then she was a 72. She's coming down to 69. Um, but if you think that she put up a 480 back in 2019 and went on, has gone on to win worlds in open, uh, in the open equipped division, you can bet that she's going to do something a lot bigger than that 480 total, probably well into the 500s and um, could definitely challenge uh, both Claire and Chelsea here at the top. All right, then coming in behind those two, um, we've got a pretty tight battle for, I would say, fourth place, um, which is between Haley Sheehan uh, from out in Buffalo. She's a super intense, super jacked, super strong lifter. Uh, she's got a four, 415 total. And then we've got Carolyn Connor, just a young 19 year old that went to junior worlds last year has been doing a, a hitting a ton of PRs lately. Her best total in competition before this was 400 kilos. So she's right there with Haley. If they could have a nice battle for fourth and then coming in behind them, we've got Amanda Ellis with a 367.5. 
We've got Joan Hahn with a 340, and we got Missy Wheeler with a 317.5. Missy Wheeler, um, just to give a shout out to her, um, she is a 54 year old. So that's an M2 lifter going head to head um, on the same platform in the same session with world champions, Kelsey McCarthy, Meg Scanlon. She'll be on the same platform with them. Um, so that's a really cool thing to see. Also, Joan Hahn is a M1 lifter, 42 year old. So it's cool to see just the age ranges here. We've got from a 19 year old in this weight class all the way up to a 54 year old, um, all going to be on the same platform. So I think it's a, a really cool thing. So, all right, this time, uh, who wants to go first? Anyone want to take this one? I'll take it. Start us off. Do it. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, this is a class where almost all the people are not posting their top end lifts on Instagram. So we're not really sure where a lot of their training is. Um, you know, we know Claire's eyes very consistent with her training typically, and she's also very consistent with not posting it, uh, at least her top end lifts. You know, she posts some like variation bench and variation squat and occasionally like a, a single here or there that's sub max, but you never really know what she's hitting top end in the gym and prep. Um, she always does a good job of hiding that, but she's very experienced and she has put up above that Carpino one total and pretty recently. And that was with, I believe, missing uh, one or two lifts. Um, so I, you know, you can only imagine if she hits those, um, hits that total that she hit in that meet, plus maybe hits those lifts that she missed, she totals even more. She missed her third deadlift. Yeah. Which that's what it was. It was that third dead would have put an extra five kilos on there. And I think she yeah. since hit it in training. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, exactly. I think, I think Claire is likely the front runner to win this class, but you can't count Chelsea. Um, Chelsea won bench gold uh, last year at Worlds, and she just competed bench nats and became the bench national champion. I believe she missed 275 pounds. Um, one thing to note with Chelsea is I do believe um, she failed her third bench at bench nats on strength, but supposedly, uh, Paul, I know you were there, supposedly it would not have probably counted with the IPF uh, elbow death rules uh, mm -hmm. had she even gotten it. Um, just something yeah. to note, I'm sure she can straighten it out, but... Let me, let me say something about that. Um, because yeah, I heard people talking about this. Um, it was one of those things where it's hard to tell when you miss on strength, uh, you know, what, but, um, there were at least, I believe at least one of the officials did mention that, that it most likely would have failed, uh, based on bench depth, but I don't think it was unanimous. Um, I don't okay. think that it was unanimous across the jury and all three refs. Obviously I didn't get to talk to all the refs. I was talking to only one of them. Um, but yeah, she might've got, she might've, you know, maybe, maybe got a two to one decision against her on that. Um, but it was not universal. And, and I do want to clarify too, at that meet, there wasn't, were, were no red lights given for any bench depth violations, um, through the whole meet. Um, and so that's pretty interesting. I think you can say that what we can take from that is that power of the America's officials are going to be calling this very much in favor of the lifter. Um, and it would need to be like unanimous, egregiously, uh, violating bench depth in order for them to give red lights, but that's how it was at bench nationals. Let's see, there's going to be some different officials. Gaston will be there, um, as well. And so, um, this will be officiated probably a little bit tighter than bench nationals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's ahead. my belief as well. Um, but yeah, you know, you can't count Chelsea out. Um, I think that she's likely going to put up a good fight. Again, Chelsea's not posting much of her top end training. She's been hitting some numbers close to her meet best in training that don't look too difficult, but we don't really know what she's hitting in her top end in training. Uh, but I assume it's going very well. Um, and then next up, uh, likely if Kelsey McCarthy can hit around what she's hit in the past raw, she'll probably have third place locked up in my opinion. But uh, again, Kelsey is a usual, uh, usually an equipped lifter and she's not posting uh, much for raw training at all. She's posted some like, absurdly high volume work, pretty sub max stuff uh, in the past, but she hasn't been posting any for raw uh, lifts top end uh, for quite a while. So we don't really know where she's at raw. Um, if she can bring around that 40 total, then she will be uh, probably comfortably in third place. But uh, there's also the potential that maybe her raw strength has faltered a lot since she has been fully equipped for so long. Um, you know, we don't really know when she switched out of equipment for raw and decided to do this and stuff. So but yeah, I think if she hits around that previous raw total, she should be a good lock for third place. Um, and then between Carolyn Connor and Haley Sheehan, or um, I think I think Carolyn Connor might have it on lock and it might not be very close. Um, Carolyn in training, I think she just totaled around like 450 in training uh, between her squat bench deadlift. She's been hitting massive PRs. She just pulled above 400 for the first time. She just squatted. Um, above three or above 170 kilos for the first time. She just benched uh, 198, I believe. Um, so she's able to recreate that or around that. I believe that she probably 
will comfortably take fourth place. But um, Haley uh, is someone who's not, not posting her training too much. So again, we don't really know what she's bringing. Um, Haley's from Buffalo. I did see her. I uh, saw one of her squats when I was competing at the Buffalo meet in October with her. Um, and she, yeah, she's a beast. Um, I think that she definitely will bring a nice total here. But again, you know, I don't really know what she's bringing. You know, the only person who's posting their top end list consistently here is Carolyn. So that's the only one that we got a lot of data to go off of. But um, I think my uh, projected rankings for how the class will finish will be Claire, then Chelsea, um, then Kelsey, and then Carolyn, then Haley for my top five. Um, and I do believe that Claire will hit the Carpino. I think that she uh, certainly has the ability to, and I have little to no doubt that she will be able to at least recreate what she did in, um, at that meet um, that she did for us uh, on the national platform. So I got Claire to win this, and I got her hit in the Carpino. So real quick before we go uh, to the next person, um, with Carolyn, she's totaled 400 before. Um, that was in Turkey at Worlds, mm -hmm. which, you know, I think a lot of people, that meet was a very difficult one. There was a lot of issues with the food and the, and the uh, you know, getting around and stuff like that. A huge travel, obviously, to get all the way over there. And she's only been really competing. Her first meet was nationals uh, earlier, like yeah. in June of uh, this year. And she's only been lifting really for like less than a year, I think, or around a year. Um, so if if you had to predict what her total would be, uh, so it's 400 was what she did in Turkey. What do you think? Where do you think she's at now? Uh, I mean, I see her probably easily recreating her gym total. Um, I'm not sure, but I, don't, I would assume she's probably not cutting too much, if at all. Um, and I, th I see her comfortably hitting around 450. Um, but yeah, I think that is also awesome to note that literally her first pilot to meet ever was pilot to America open, uh, nationals or sorry, I think it was, was it junior nationals, junior nationals. Yeah. It was uh, first meet ever was pilot America junior nationals and their second meet ever is worlds. Um, I don't know. I don't know anybody that has done that before. That's a pretty cool feat. And that's a pretty awesome experience to uh, have your second meet ever be worlds. Um, and yeah, she did that 400 with, you know, everybody was saying, the condition of the turkey weren't great for competing and prepping so i think she did that under the harshest conditions with the harshest judging which says a lot and she's just progressed um rapidly since then all right good good points all right who wants to go next um <clears throat> i can go next yeah. um i pretty much agree with everything sam had to say um i think uh, Claire is going to pretty easily hit the Carpino total. Um, I think Chelsea is a solid lock on second. Um, I don't really know um, much about Kelsey. Uh, she doesn't post that much. She posted some very light raw training, but you know we all know what she's capable of. And I think that those are one, two, and three. Um, Chelsea, I, I just want to say she's been hitting some massive, massive rep PRs. Like she, mm -hmm. I think she deadlifted 429 for three. So, and and I think she's been squatting, I think she squatted 363 for like five as well. So um, she's really hitting some massive numbers. And then I have Carolyn Connor um, coming in fourth. She just hit a 391 squat. So her numbers are really going up. And then uh, rounding out the top five, I have Haley. I think this is gonna be a really um, entertaining uh, weight class to watch. Even if there's not that many close head-to-head -head battles, there's a lot of compelling storylines here. And um, there's a lot of really exciting lifters. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh Chelsea Savitt, I mean, is is a fierce competitor. Uh, she's super experienced, and she's definitely she's got that world's level experience. She she made it onto the team last year, finishing in second. So she's definitely a gritty, you know, scrappy competitor. And like you said, with rep PRs, it's hard to predict where she's at. I know she has been hitting some PRs, and her training has been pretty consistent. I know she was focused on bench a little bit, um, but she's a super smart person, super hard worker. So if anyone can kind of pull off a big upset. Uh, it could be her. And then I think Kelsey too. I mean, we just don't know. So, all right, Marcus, let's go on to you, man. What do you think about this weight class? Um, I, I think that, I think it's going to be more of 
I wouldn't say a toss up, but I think that the match is going to be closer than uh, we're realizing here because it, it just all comes down to, you know, the fact that no one's really posting much about the, you know, their top end of training. Um, I know that, you know, with Chelsea specifically, that she hit around uh, 175 on squat like four weeks ago. And I know that uh, Claire hit like 185, but I do know that. You know, Chelsea, she's only been posting, you know, really submax training, um, submax training that's, you know, e uh, equivalent or, you know, slightly above, you know, what she's been doing in competition here. Um, but I have Claire squeaking out here in first place. I have her hitting the Carpino. I have uh, Chelsea getting a close second. And then honestly, I just think that, you know, the experience with equipped lifting, you know, and just how well the transfer over, I think that there's no one really in the fourth place position that could really give a run for third place. So that's why I have Kelsey uh, coming in here at third. Um, and I would like to agree, you know, Carolyn, I have that uh, really solid fourth pick. Um, I def uh, definitely have her uh, hitting around for gym PRs. Um, bench specifically might be a little bit iffy considering, you know, she hit a 198 bench on the fat pad. So, you know, that could be, a little bit, you know, different compared to, you know, the actual, you know, meat standards, but I don't see it being that much different, um, especially because she has been hitting egregious numbers. And with, you know, the experience being that young, uh, going into world championships as, you know, the second competition and seeing what that kind of stuff is like, I don't see it being that much of an issue in terms of like faltering her. Um, so, yeah, I have Claire first, uh, Chelsea second, you know, Kelsey third, Carolyn fourth, and I have Claire hitting the Carpino. All right. Um, I mean, really good points. I mean, you're talking about Carolyn again. It's like she does junior nationals, junior worlds, and now open nationals. Um, and it, you know, and in a fourth place finish in a, the biggest weight class on the women's side is the 69s. This has the most, most athletes in it. Um, so what a amazing start to her young career. I'm really excited for her. Um, and then just going back to Chelsea, I was just looking at her Instagram a little bit, um, looking back at a couple of posts before bench nats and stuff. And she was, she is hitting PRs and they're all time PRs. And she's gone through some like major back surgeries uh, in the past. And so a lot of her PRs, when she posts them on her story and stuff, she'll say, this is a, a post surgery PR. And then now she's in the territory where she's almost all three lifts. She's hitting all time PRs, not just post surgery PRs, but all time PRs. She did PR her bench just not too long ago. So she'll definitely um, improve her full power total with that bench that she PR'd recently. And uh, she puts a PR, she says she hasn't PR'd her deadlift in a long time, but she's guaranteed she'll PR it now. So, I mean, if, if we look at her number 502 and you think, well, maybe she's got five more here, five more there, she could be right up around where that Carpino, she could be right around that qualifying total. So I think that's going to be an exciting one to look at. All right. So recapping this session. So this again, um, this session will start at two o'clock on Saturday and it'll be, there's only, it'll be one flight. So it'll be very much like a prime time session and there's only like 11 lifters. So it'll go pretty fast. Um, it'll be, it'll be really easy to watch. Um, there's a ton of great competitors in here. Um, so what are you guys looking forward to most about this session? Mm. Go, go ahead, Julie. Are you, who are you looking forward to seeing the most? <laughs> I mean, I'm looking forward to lifting with all these people that, yeah. you know, I've looked up to, um, you know, Chelsea Savitt, Claire Zai, um, Megan Scanlon, uh, I've met, uh, Claire and Megan, and they're both, um, you know, really nice people. Um, they've, you know, Megan tried to help me out with my shoulder at the last meet. Um, it's, it's really good to see um, all these really strong competitors, and I'm just really looking forward to lifting with all of them. I also wanted to make one correction. Um, Chelsea, the rep PR I was thinking of is actually 380 for four on squat. So, I mean, that's, that's huge. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm just looking forward to lifting with all these people that I've looked up to for, you know, years. So. Yeah. I mean, 380 for four, just to mention that real quick. I mean, her best, if we're looking in pounds is 397. Uh, so um, yeah, if she can hit that for 380 for a four, I mean, she might be due for, you know, five, five, 10 kilos on, on squat. 
which would be, um, like I said, it put her right in that category for possibly hitting the, uh, the qualifying total. Um, all right. What are you guys looking forward to though? Marcus, go ahead. Um, I would say, you know, starting off with uh, Meg here, I'm really excited to see her. I mean, you know, saw her last meet, you know, uh, was absolutely astounded with the numbers that she was putting up last meet. So I'm really excited to see what she's going to do with this one. I'm also really excited to see, you know, some really solid veterans, you know, coming back in again. Um, and I'm also excited to see, you know, someone like, you know, Carolyn Connor coming in, you know, as, you know, their third meet ever being open nets. Uh, after, you know, doing really well in training and just being like a, a very solid competitor in terms of, you know, their potential in the sport, just to see, you know, the flower kind of grow. Uh, it's honestly, you know, one of the really cool parts about, you know, the sport and watching it. Good, good points. All right, Sam, what do you think? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see world class athletes. And there's a lot of death here, too. I think it's gonna be awesome. And I do like a nice, fast paced primetime style uh, meet slash session. Um, I'm excited for that uh, structure as well. I think it's gonna be awesome, and it'll be really cool after this exciting day to cap it off with the Aleco barbecue. Oh yeah, we gotta mention the Aleco barbecue for sure. So um, the Aleco barbecue, I think it starts at like six. So this session starts at two o'clock Central Time. You can watch it on the SBD Apparel's YouTube account live stream. It'll be on PowerfulAmerica.com's also. Uh, the live page. And if you're there in person, it's going to be super fun to watch, probably like less than a three hour session, um, probably like about two and a half hours, something like that. And then once it's over, we'll have plenty of time to do press conferences with the athletes and recap some of their uh, performances and then get cleaned up and head on over to the Aleco barbecue, which is at Aleco headquarters. It's walking distance from the venue. Um, they open up their doors and you get to go in and just basically see all the amazing equipment outside they got huge smokers set up they'll be smoking meats and have a uh, huge you know like four or five big coolers full of adult and all age beverages um and so that will be really fun last year they had a comedian uh show up uh and give give it uh, and they had a they had a mariachi band um so like it's just a blast i actually got to sit at the table with meg and her uh husband brian scanlan he's hilarious uh and so it's a really great bonding experience i think everyone that goes to that aleco barbecue afterwards just feels like you know we're like family now we all hang out and uh, we're all friends and and brings brings the community closer together so big shout out to aleco for doing that and putting that on and uh, i love to i want to see something like this at all of our national meets you know um so that creates kind of the the family and the camaraderie amongst everyone in our community and even people last year that weren't at the meet um there was another meet going on in town and some pe other people from the community um that we all know all came over for it as well so it's just a good way to bring everyone together um and so yeah we're really looking forward to it all right well with that that is session three at uh power of the american nationals it'll be saturday 2 p.m definitely don't want to miss it it's going to be action-packed great viewing experience a short one flight um should be amazing and we're now on to the final session, session four, which is Sunday, and it will be starting at noon. Um, so a nice, you know, late start time so that people can wake up wherever you are in the country and tune in and watch it on the SBD Apparel YouTube channel live stream or also on powerfteenamerica.com. Um, on our live page, you'll see it there as well. So definitely tune in. Um, we're going to break this one down. We're going to look at the women's classes first, the 76s the 84s and the 84 pluses, and then we'll move over to the 120s and the 120 pluses. Um, the, the, those are the five weight classes that'll be competing in this session. It's a pretty big session, so it'll be something of a long one, probably two flights. And um, But yeah, let's get right into it. So starting off in the 76 kilo weight class, we've got the returning national champion and, uh, and the IPF fourth place finisher, Dana McNeil, she'll be uh, coming over from, I believe, I, I don't know for sure, but I believe she's traveling from Japan where she's stationed uh, in the military. And so she'll have a big travel coming over. And she's pretty much in this weight class, the 76 is the only person that's close to hitting the qualifying total, which is 561 in the 76 kilo weight class. Um, and Dana in the past has done a 532.5. Also in the weight class, we've got another master's lifter coming in, Lindsay Rubel. She's done a 400 before. She's only done one meet back in December. Um, so again, this is a master's lifter who's coming into the sport, 
Um, uh, she did the same meet that you did, Julia, in Brooklyn. And it's it's her first, you know, it's really cool to see people coming into the sport in their 40s and then competing at a local meet and then going to nationals and looking like she's going to get a silver medal at nationals. And then coming in behind her, we have Megan Hornung. Um, she's done 282.5 before. Um, she's also uh, one of the competitors from Buffalo. Um, and she's only really been competing for a little over a year. And so um, she's another one who started lifting, started competing in her 30s. And she gives back to the sport. Super nice woman. If you see her, she'll definitely be the, like one of the life of the party. Um, she gives back to the sport a lot. She's a referee and she referees at our meets out in Buffalo, New York. So um, really super nice and special person. But yeah, this one looks like a runaway for Dana McNeil. So uh, I'll go ahead and hand this one off. Let's let Marcus take this one first. Go ahead, Marcus. What do you think? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think that it, I don't think that it's, it's, I think it's pretty cut and dry. Um, you know, I just, you can't really, you look at the numbers here and, you know, I, I do think that, you know, traveling back here from uh, Japan is going to, you know, provide a little bit of a hit, but I do not think that the hit will be nearly uh, as bad, uh, bad enough to let anyone really get close. Um, I do think that all the competitors are very solid and I do think that it's great to see people coming out to the sport, like we had mentioned many times, you know, coming out to the sport, uh, really giving themselves exposure, um, especially like in the younger divisions or like the older divisions, um, showing up and showing out and, you know, being able to stand on the pedestal with like a really high level lifters. Um, but yeah, I have Dana taken first and uh, I have her, you know, in terms of the Carpino, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not confident. Mm -hmm. well you won't be there so you could you could say that you uh don't think that she'll hit it uh and she's she won't take it out yeah and then she won't it. yeah but <laughs> but um, sam and me Dana, and Julia, you're watching but, this um you're you're a very nice person uh thank you for your service um <laughs> but you know yep not gonna not gonna touch on that further <laughs> all right all right, let's kick it over to Julia. What do you think? Um, yeah, I, I pretty much agree here. Um, I would love for uh, Darren to hit the the Carpino total. I, I mean, that would be, you know, we're all rooting for her. And, um, you yeah, know, the, the flight is going to probably um, have an effect, but she's really strong and I'm excited to see what she puts up. I think, you know, obviously she is uh, the runaway favorite for this class. And um, she has um, a massive deadlift, but I mean, her squad is also really, really strong too. She's she's a really strong competitor and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what she puts up. Um, it's also, it's, it's great to see um, masters um, lifters competing in um the open in the open nationals um that's always great you know um having the diversity of age and um backstories is always something that is makes it a little more interesting and a little more compelling mm -hmm. um and yeah just thank you to to megan for for being a referee you know we always need more of those so yeah uh, Looking forward to, to watching this weight class. For sure. All right, Sam. Uh, yeah, you know, everybody said a lot of things I agree with. I think that, you know, Dana's obviously likely going to win. Uh, I don't think the flight will take too much out of her, um, as some people might think. I mean, she literally created the same total that she had at Nationals last year when she flew to Worlds in South Africa last year. So I don't think the travel will be too much of an issue for her. You know, I'm not sure her exact plans, but I'm sure it won't be too much of a burden for her um i do think that carpino might be a little out of reach um but you know we don't see all of Dana's training she posts um some training here and there um but i and she had said that bench was looking um very promising in her training recently which i know that she's always probably disliked bench the most she said um so you know we might be able to see some prs there um but i'm very excited to see what she does uh dana is just a beast um i'm excited to see what total she puts up it'll be fun um, and then I think it's also really cool, the diversity of stories and people we have in this class. You know, we have Lindsay, who's a master's lifter competing in open, and she just started 
uh, powerlifting pretty recently, which is awesome. And then we have Megan, who's a super nice person and a ref. Um, overall, this class is just full of great people. And I think it'll be a nice, fun watch. Yeah. And so just to talk about Dana just a little bit more, um, she has an absolutely massive deadlift. Um, so like she's pulled 534 in competition in pounds. Um, she, when you're talking about, um, her performances last year at nationals, she went nine for nine and she put up the 532.5 to a kilo total. And then in South Africa at worlds, she's pulling for the win uh, or pulling for the podium, um, and put up also a 532.5 missing her last deadlift though. Um, mm -hmm. so, and that wasn't a huge turnaround in terms of time. It was like April to June. Um, and, and she like, I, I mean, hypothetically, if she loads two and a half less or whatever, she probably gets it and she PRs her total there. Um, you could imagine that since then she's had a lot of time to train and Dana's one of these people that she's in the military. She's consistent. I mean, I know she probably has stress, uh, with her career and everything like that, but like, she is pretty consistently posting that she's in the gym at least. Um, and like you said, it's kind of hard sometimes to get a full picture, um, because she's on pound plates and, you know, things like this and see like exactly what, what, where her numbers are. But I think that'll be really the storyline of this is kind of just, can she shock us? Can she shock everyone and come out and PR her total by like basically 30 kilos, um, to hit that qualifying total, make it back onto the national team. Um, this is a really tough one. This weight class, the reason why the qualifying total is so high is because of Jessica Bittner. Um, you know, she put up a 585 at Worlds this last year, which is going into that average, and she put up a 563 the year before that. So this is one of those ones where the qualifying total is really high because the competition in this weight class is extremely stiff when you get to Worlds. And part of the reason why we're using Carpino scores is to help select a team that will have a good chance of winning when they go to Worlds. Um, not to say that Dana wouldn't have a good chance of making the podium or something at Worlds, but when you see uh, like Carlina just put up a 600 kilo total um, and then got invited to Sheffield. So this is one of those weight classes where it's, you know, the U.S. Um, doesn't isn't as competitive as these other countries around the world where we have, you know, um, Agatha Shiko as well, who's right there in that same like 600 range, Jess and Carlina. So it, we're looking like if we take someone in this weight class, it's probably going to be a fourth place finish. And that's not going to add up to a ton of points for us national team. So that's why it's structured that way. Even though Dana, we all love her. She's amazing. She was on the us na uh, national team last year. Again, she's in the military and definitely thank her for her service. Um, and she's a fierce competitor too. Um, so it's really cool to see. So we'll see, maybe she'll hit it. Maybe she won't. Um, but if she, even if she does, uh, and she makes on us national team, she's got to go against absolute killers at the international level. Um, in like pretty much the most stacked weight class on the, on the women's side. So it'll be a tough road even at once if she does get out of nationals. So, all right, you guys have anything else you want to add to that? No. Yeah, All right. Nailed it. All right. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Let's move on to the 84 kilo class. This is a very interesting one. Um, so the queen of the 84s, um, one of the goats in our sport, Amanda Lawrence is not going to be here. She's going to Sheffield. She's going to save herself for Sheffield where she's got a legit shot at winning like $50,000. Um, so it makes sense. Um, and so she's decided that she will try to qualify for the U S national team by putting up a really big total at Sheffield, um, in order to qualify, all she has to do at Sheffield is hit the qualifying total, which is 621.5. She's done 636.5 before, um, at worlds. And so she's very capable of doing that at Sheffield, but the, so she chose to do that and not come to national. So here at nationals. The total, because that's Amanda Lawrence's world records that the, this qualifying total is based off of, there's not really anyone that's that close to getting that 621.5, but we'd still have five competitors here. And um, the first one that I want to mention is Michelle Robbins. So Michelle Robbins is, let me pull her up real quick here on my open powerlifting. Shout out open powerlifting. I should become a Patreon supporter of them. We're, I have like a thousand open powerlifting tabs open right now. Um, but yeah, 
Michelle Robbins, um, she's been competing since 2014, um, but she started competing when she was 16 years old and she's only 24 now. So she's just barely going to be aging out of the juniors. And um, her best total to date is a 527.5. So she's around 100 kilos behind the qualifying total. Then behind her, um, you've got Aliza Tesler, uh, one of our best friends in the sport. Um, she's the life of the party. She's a super fun, great person. She went, she was on our NAPF team last year, went to Panama and became, uh, I think she finished in second place in her weight class there. But um, she, she has been a 76 in the past. She's moving up to 84. And um, she took second place last year in PA Nats at 76. And it's looking like behind Michelle Robbins, she'll probably take second place here. Um, and then after that, we've got Mary Gregory kind of in a, in a, space of her own here in this weight class with a 405 total she's 47 years old um she's an m1 she's gonna probably make it onto the podium and she's an m1 going on to be an m2 before too long and then after that we got whitney de graf uh she's a 382.5 and we got samantha shirley with a 302.5 um samantha shirley's been lifting for just about a year so it's uh cool to see again with power of the America nationals, we're seeing that we have like a lot of diversity in terms of ages um, and experience levels on the national stage. And that's really cool because we're going to be able to see a podium here um, that has some diversity in it with possibly Mary Gregory uh, taking third place and finishing as a 47 year old and so in the bronze medal position. So with that, I'm going to kick it off to you all um, this time. Let's go with Julia first. Um, yeah. So um, I think it's, Really interesting that the um, two front runners are um, lifters that have moved up um, from the 76 uh, kilo class. Um, but I, I have uh, Michelle Robbins um, easily taking it, um, and then Elisa in second, and um, Mary Gregory, um, as you said, uh, Masters lifter, 47 years old. Um, solidly in third. Um, so shout out to her. I mean, you know, I just hope I'm lifting at 47. Anything. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, but, uh, I don't, I don't have, um, much more to add on that. Um, yeah. She's, she's way out totally me already. So, um, <laughs> all right, let's kick it over to Marcus. Um, yeah, sure. So, um, first off, just want to say that with, uh, Amanda Lawrence, uh, being, you know, the type of person she is just putting the Carpino at, you know, that kind of um, that kind of state where it's really untouchable by these lifters. Um, nothing against them personally. It's just that when you have such a high Carpino score, there's literally uh, not much that can be done. Um, I do have uh, Michelle taking that first place. I mean, she's been hitting consistently over 500 pound deadlifts in training. Um I know that she a few weeks ago hit, you know, above or was it 300 on the dot? One of those two. It was like a touch and go. Um, but she's hitting high 200s um, with, you know, competition pauses. I don't see it being that big of an issue for Michelle uh, taking that first place, especially when all of those lifts um, are just easily above all of the lifts of the second place competitor. There's no real battle here where it's like sometimes you'll have the lifters, um, you know, really pull for that victory. There's not really going to be much of that here. Um, I'll have uh, Tesla in second place. I mean, there's just the numbers here are just kind of too spaced out to where there can be too much of a fight here. Um, I mean, yeah, I think that it's going to go uh, Michelle, then Eliza, and then, you know, probably Mary, Whitney, and then Samantha. All right. And let's kick it on over to Sam then. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think Michelle seems to have this one uh, probably locked down. Uh, she's uh, had, had a big deadlift in training. I believe she pulled uh, 24 pounds above her meat PR in training recently. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what she puts on the platform. Um, so yeah, I think Michelle's going to win this class. And then I think Aliza will be a, a close uh, second uh, second place finisher. Uh, Aliza just started um, getting coached by the strength guys and her training's been looking really good recently. Um, and she's been hitting some, she just hit some really big PRs recently in training as well that she posted. Um, so it'll be cool to see what she puts on the platform. Um, she represented us at the NAPF championships last year and got second place as a 76. So I'm excited to see what her potential 
Hill ends up being in the 84s. Um, but overall, I think Alita's got second on lock. Um, and then I think it'll be cool. Hopefully, Mary Gregory takes third place. Um, she's who I think will get third place. And I think it's awesome that we have another Masters lifter who's lifting um, alongside the open, um, with the open lifters. I think it'll be cool. For sure. Yeah. And just to speak on Eliza, um, again, like she, uh, she's really strong and she's always kind of had to limit herself to stay into the 76 weight class. So the fact that I think she's permanently going up to 84 now, she's really tall uh, when you see her in person. So like, she's definitely has trouble staying in that 76 weight class. Like, and she's a foodie. Um, like when we were in Panama, her, her fiance, uh, and her, like we're eating, they were ordering tons of food everywhere we went. Like they're super into food. So I think it's probably good for, for her mental health as well to just be able to like eat more and grow more and grow into sport. She's also diabetic. Um, so like Jess Bittner that we mentioned before, you know, she's got like a glucose monitor on her or whatever. Uh, I don't know exactly what I think it's a glucose monitor. And, um, you know, so she has to deal with that as well. So probably trying to cut and, and and I'll do water cuts and water loading all this kind of stuff like when you're also diabetic that's probably a big challenge for her as well so i think it'll be really cool to see her um she was also uh at at the meet handling her friend in buffalo that you were at sam and she's just a really mm -hmm. great person a really fun person to hang out with and i'm really looking forward to hopefully she'll be make it onto the napf team again which this year the napf team will be going to the cayman islands so i'm really looking forward to hanging out with aliza uh, and her fiance in the Cayman Islands and eating tons of food, which she won't have to worry about watching her weight or anything like that. So I think that'll be a blast. But yeah, um, also, I'm very just curious, like Michelle Robbins, I don't know a ton about her. So I'm looking forward to just getting to know her and seeing how she performs. Looking at her Instagram, she seems really intense, you know, and like, and really strong. So um, I think that she might come out of this being a little bit of, you know, getting a little bit of the spotlight on her. Um, which is much needed because, you know, she's someone that I don't know much about. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about her in the sport yet. And she's only 24 years old. So like she has a potential to be like a really strong lifter in this weight class. And then lastly, just we'll say like, yes, it, Amanda's not here, but her numbers are here. Um, that's why this qualifying total is so high, 621.5. It's because of Amanda Lawrence. And uh, so her in her absence you will still feel her presence um because of this number and so we'll still be talking about her um she's the queen and we love her and we hope that she's gonna tear it up over at sheffield and uh win that for team usa uh, we're always rooting for t for for uh, the american lifters you know the powerlifting america lifters wherever they may be competing so definitely want wish her nothing but success at sheffield and i think She's got a fire lit under her and she is, uh, wants to put her name back on the map. I think 2022, um, was kind of like, you know, like Leah, Carlina, a lot of people are talking about, um, and, and they need, and even Tiff and, you know, a lot of other lifters have emerged on the women's side when it used to be kind of like Amanda dominant. And I think she wants to go to Sheffield and, and let everyone remember who, who the real queen is on the women's side of powerlifting. And it's, it's Amanda Lawrence. All right. With that, um, let's move on to the 84 plus kilo weight class. Unless you guys have anything else you want to say or add? No, nothing on the 84s. Yeah. All right. Um, so this is a really interesting one. Um, again, we have who I refer to as the queen of goats. All right. Bonica Brown, um, 11 time world champion. Um, I mean, absolutely untouchable for like over a decade. Um, it's just the strongest woman in the world. Um, and so again, we have a qualifying total here that is astronomically high again, because these are Bonica Brown's numbers. Um, so the qualifying total in the 84 plus kilo weight class is 638.5 kilos. And without Bonica here, um, we've got a lot of fun competitors here that are going to be fighting it out for the podium, but, um, no one is really that close to that number. So interestingly enough, who is the closest? Who is in first, probably going to finish in first place is a 17 year old woman named Luella Bowden. Um, so she just started powerlifting. Um, she just did a qualifying meet. Um, she's obviously still in high school and she has a really bright future. So I'm so excited to see her. She's like going to be a rising star. She did a meet, uh, a small meet in Arizona, and I don't think it got picked up on a lot of people's radar uh, who she is. So I think she's coming in to really make a name for herself, and she'll be the talk of the town after this session. 
Um, I think behind her, we got two lifters that are pretty close. We got Erlina Morgan, a 485, and Tosh Tashel Kerr, a 477.5. So there'll be a nice battle there for second place. Uh, Alina was a Texas high school lifter. Um, she's so she has a lot of experience in equipment all through high school, started at a young age and only started going raw in 2022 when she did three meets. So it'd be very cool to see that 485 total that she has there. If she can put a lot on that. Um, also to show Kerr is also young, 22 year old from Mississippi has only done one meet, um, and put up a 477.5, which if Luella wasn't here doing it a 550 at 17 years old, you know, we'd be saying that 477.5 is like really, really impressive. Um, and then behind, um, then we have Sarah Shelton. She's a 25 year old. She put up a 360. She's a bench press specialist. Um, she's done bench only for most of 2022 went to Puerto Rico for the North American bench championships and took first place in the open on bench. So big bencher. So probably do something pretty exciting for us on bench. And then lastly, we got Marissa Ruland, um, who's a USPA lifter who, um, she did, she's done three thirty. She, but she also, um, I think that's her best total. I don't know. My notes are confusing on this one. Oh no, she's done four, four ten. um, is her best. So she's, she's in the mix as well. She's a, a USPA lifter coming over. So this will be a little bit of a different experience, um, you know, with the two hour weigh ins and, uh, you know, using the power bar for all three lifts and stuff. So be curious to see how she handles that. All right. On this one, uh, we've been going to Sam last. So let's go to Sam first on this one. Oh uh, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. I think Luella, uh, likely has it locked up that first place spot. Um, she did just compete a few weeks ago, so it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, maybe she didn't take that meet too aggressively. She has some more in the tank. Maybe she just matches that total. Regardless, she just um she just totaled five fifty at a local meet uh, a few weeks ago. And um prior to that, she competed in October. And I believe between October and recently, she added like two hundred plus pounds to her total, which is um awesome. I mean, that's massive, especially for a seventeen year old. I mean that that shows she's definitely got a bright future. Uh, totally five fifty of seventeen years old is a very good indicator that she has a bright future. So it'll be really cool to see what she does here. Uh, I think likely she will command the first spot um, relatively easily. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure how much an effect that competing recently will have on her, especially um, given that. But um, and then I think, you know, Arlena and then Tichelle will be an interesting battle for second place. Uh, both have relatively similar uh, best totals. Um, you know, Arlena has uh, Texas high school experience. So, you know, she has been powerlifting for quite some time and she just recently switched over to uh raw lifting which is um exciting so it'll be interesting to see uh what she does there and then Tashel is pretty new to powerlifting i believe she's done one meet um so it'll be interesting to see the potential great rate of progress that she will have as well um and overall i think i'm gonna side with erlina for second place um because she has more experience uh so we have a little bit more um ability to predict what she will do but Tashel could shock us and take uh second place as well i wouldn't be surprised um and then i think it'll be interesting to see what uh shara shelton puts up especially on bench um because she's represented us at bench nationals and uh napf bench championships as well uh, so i'm excited to see that as well yeah and uh just to mention sarah shelton like we mentioned she took open at napfs in puerto rico this last year this is a cool thing about with being on powerlifting america in the ipf is that we have regionals and we have worlds so our north american regionals um last year the open or all full power meet was in Panama and bench was in Puerto Rico. Um, so yeah, so this upcoming year, the, the full power is in Cayman islands and I'm not sure where the bench press is. Uh, Oh, Mexico city is what I've heard. Um, so, so that's really cool to get to travel and go do those things. But yeah, Sarah did win bench bench press national. So she'll be going to bench worlds, um, this year, um, based on the qualifying criteria for that. So that's really cool to have it, someone that with that international experience on this platform as well. All right. Let's kick it over to Julia. Okay, so um, I agree with everything that was said. Um, I think it's really interesting that this weight class is, um, you know, very young, um, pretty much across the board. Um, I think we have two lifters who are high school age who are, I think, are going to be um, one and two. So that's really interesting to me. I, I do think that the um, second place spot 
could could be a little bit of a battle and we could see something pretty exciting there with uh Jishel and Arlena um so I'm looking forward to that um but I think Luella is a solid lock on um first and I am excited to see how she progresses in the sport because she just has massive potential um 550 at 17 is you know absolutely wild to say the least so yeah, yeah. those are my predictions. for sure all right marcus um yeah sure um yeah uh this for me specifically that uh there's not really much that can be added upon here i do have luella taking their first place lock um i am really uh, excited to see what people who are just like really young and, and into lifting are capable of. Um, I find uh, Erlina's uh, situation uh, very interesting because, you know, she's um, checking back here um, on like her Instagram. Uh, she's been well into five plus years of strength training, um, not just powerlifting. So I just find it uh, extremely interesting to see uh, what someone like her is capable of. Um, I think that, you know, she has that experience that I'm going to have her squeak above uh, to shell here as a second place uh, finisher. Um, I just think that it's just too much of a gap between Erlina and Luella that I just have Luella taking that first place. Uh, once again, this is that type of situation where, you know, the Carpino is just way too high. Um, however, nonetheless, I think that uh, uh, people specifically like Luella and Erlina are in such a good position. Uh, being such young lifters, putting up such insane numbers that they have a lot of potential, especially in this class. Yeah, for sure. Um, just speaking on Erlina, she's been competing in powerlifting uh, because again, she's from Texas. So she competed in high school since she was 16 years old and now she's 22. Um, so um, definitely has a ton of experience and still young and progressing and committed to the sport, it seems like. So um, that Erlina has a really bright future. And of course, Luella, we're all going to be, like I said, I think we're all going to be saying her name after this. And then the other person's name that we're going to be probably saying a lot when this meet is over is going to be Bonica Brown, um, talking about what she might do at Sheffield. Um, and if she can possibly, you know, she's, she's definitely going to probably break her squat world record. I saw she took her squat, squat world record from worlds for a double recently, um, in training, she doesn't show any of her training. And again, she's just like Amanda, uh, her absence will definitely be felt in this weight class um, with that qu qualifying total being so high based off of all of her uh, world records and her 11 time world championships. So, all right. And I know also speaking of Bonica, she, she has a fire lit under her as well um, from some controversies that happened at world games. Um, and so, you know, uh, she, I think she has personally told me many times uh, that everyone is sleeping on her and she's just going to remind everyone who she is. <laughs> so I love it. Uh, so we'll, we'll get her on the podcast um, after nationals and talk to her about this and stuff and get her to weigh in on what she thinks about these uh, young lifters that are here. All right. So with that, that wraps up the women's divisions. Um, that's the 84 plus uh, uh, weight class. And so now we're going to move on over to the last two f um, weight classes that are in this division. And that's the 120s and the 120 pluses. So looking at the 120s, uh, this is going to be a nice battle, uh, really a three-way battle um, between, you know, some very high level lifters. The qualifying total in the 120s is 922.5. And of these lifters, one of them has done it before. Um, and that's Mike Tashare. And Mike Tashare has done a 932 before. But the caveat being with that 932 is that that was back in 2011. Uh, if I'm looking at this right. Um, so that was over 10 years ago that Mike T put up that 932. If we're looking at what Mike T has done recently or earlier this year, he did an 880 and he did an 895 also in 2022. So he's probably right around that 900 kilo range. Um, and the person who's the reigning national champion and went to worlds and finished in second place in this weight class is Enrique Lugo. He's done a 920 before, so he's right on that edge of that qualifying total. Uh, his best performance uh, in the past, that was at Powerlifting American Nationals last year. If he can repeat that performance and just put on two and a half, 
he's he's in on the on the U.S. national team, assuming that he'll be able to beat Mike T. And the third person that we want to be looking at in this three-way battle is going to be Tristan Nasalrod, who had a wire-to-wire finish with Lugo last year at Open Nationals. He's put up a 907.5, but he hasn't competed since last year at, at, at Powerlifting American Nationals. So he's had a lot of time to train. He's got a great coach um, in Bill McCarthy. He's a very hard worker. Um, he's very consistent. He looks like he's been hitting some PRs lately. So it'll be a very interesting three-way battle, and it'll be very interesting to see if uh, any or possibly all three of these lifters could hit the qualifying total of 922.5. Behind them, uh, we've got John Vasquez. Uh, he's got an 860. Um, and then we've got George Hanna, who's got an 805. And we got Marty Agos, who's like a 790. And then we've got Caden Hush, uh, who's done 710 raw, but he's also a bench specialist, just one best lifter at bench nationals, has a massive bench on him. So that'll be fun for, you know, everyone in the crowd to see load up all those reds on his bench. Um, and yeah, so I think I mentioned everyone in this weight class. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you all. Julia, you want to go first on this one? Um, sure. So I, uh, have actually been looking at, uh, Tristan's training, um, recently, and he's just hitting some massive numbers. Um, I think, uh, I, I looked a little bit at Enrique as well. Um, I, I have, I have Tristan winning this. Um, I don't really know. Um, I, Mike, um, you know, he's, he's a legend, but I haven't seen much of his training recently. Um, and Tristan is just so strong right now with um, especially his his squat and deadlift. And he has been hitting some massive uh, numbers on reps on bench. Um, and I think that that is just going to be, um, as far as I know, a little bit um, too much for the others to overcome. Um, but, but you never know. Um, I think that, uh, Tristan and Enrique both, um, have the potential to hit, uh, the, this Carpino total. I, I don't know about Mike, like I said, um, you know, his numbers in 2022 have been a little bit different than they have in the past. Um, but, you know, he he knows what he's doing and he's he's one of the best in the game so he he definitely has um potential to be in there as well but i'm really looking forward to watching this weight class i think this might be one of the more underrated battles that's taking place um at nationals and you know it's going to be really exciting to see it's um the last session it's um their big numbers being put up and yeah looking forward to it Absolutely. This was one of the, the most heated sessions uh, in Power of the American Nationals last year um, between Lugo and Tristan. And uh, it was it came down to the last deadlift and Tristan like got it up to his knees and just couldn't lock it out. And it was for the win. And, um, you know, then Lugo went on and, and finished in second at, at Worlds, brought back the silver medal. So it was an extremely exciting battle for sure. Um, so, all right, let's pass it off over here to Marcus. Yeah, uh, specifically for this uh, for this class, it's it's a bit of a toss up in my opinion. I think that it's going to be extremely tight, no matter uh, which direction people are going with here, um, because you know specifically uh, for Mike's situation, looking at his Instagram here, you know, posting you know pretty sub max training, uh, not really much that you know I myself have enough enough expertise to really uh, give a good estimate on you know how that's going to impact him on meet day. So I'm going to save that you know stuff for Sam. Um, in terms of Enrique and his training, um, he's been putting up some decent numbers, but not the type of numbers that I would have expected of him, especially given his, uh, scenarios and, you know, all of his past meets, um, Tristan, on the other hand, I think that, you know, he's hungry and I think that he is the person, you know, coming in, uh, after a loss and I'm not sure how that's going to affect him. But I know that it's going to be a tight battle between him and Enrique once again. Um, I'm, I think, you know, this is this is one that you know I just genuinely don't have that much of a solid, confident uh, decision on. But you know, with everyone's training going the way it is, um, 
I, I kind of have to cast Mike aside for now because there's just not much information that I personally can go off of. So, you know, between Enrique and Tristan, I'm going to have, you know, I think I'm going to have Tristan taking this and Enrique um, taking either, you know, that second or third place decision just based uh, based on, you know, where Mike is in this in this situation. Um, but in terms of the Carpino, um, I see, I, I think I can see um, all three of them realistically taking it. Um, it all depends on, you know, how they're going to be moving here uh, on those deadlifts specifically, like you had mentioned um, about Tristan, you know, trying to pull for the win here. And if he is put in that position again, how that's going to affect him and his placement. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. I mean, it's so, I mean, this one, it's like one of these ones where we have a couple of wild cards because Mike T and, and Lugo both haven't really posted too much of their training, but we all know it looks like Tristan's definitely going to put up something crazy. Um, go ahead, Sam. Uh, yeah, I think the way that Tristan's training is looking, he's winning this one, and I don't, I don't actually think it will be that close. Um, sadly, uh, you know, Lugo has been dealing with injuries, I know, and you know, as of recently, he put up um, a pretty difficult looking seven sixteen squat, seven sixteen deadlift, which are you know barely within sixty pounds of what Tristan has been hitting on squat and deadlift. Uh, Lugo definitely has Tristan on bench, that's for sure. Um, but I do think that Tristan has um, progressed so much on his lifts that he is either he's looking at probably total above 2K. I think he'll probably total above the Carpino uh, if he's able to recreate what he's been hitting and training on the platform, which I think he's capable of. Um, you know, if we look at his total last year, he, uh, I believe he took, it was 727 for his second deadlift and then went all the way up to 799 for his third in order to try to pull for the win last year at Nets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he just pulled 780, I believe, in training. Um, and if he's able to pull 780 or even less than that, he still is hitting around that um, that 922.5. Um, so I, I think that Tristan likely will uh, win, and I think that he will hit above the Carpino um unless Enrique's maybe has some wild hidden training we haven't seen I think that Tristan probably will walk away with this one um but Enrique you know you can't come out you know went to Worlds last year uh battle tested he's been lifting for a very long time uh, I think that he will he will likely take second place um and I think Mike T will likely take third place um I know Mike had posted about potentially being injured um so I'm you know I'm not sure where his training has been at he doesn't post a lot of um, his top end stuff, but he is Mike T. You know, he's been competing since I think 2003, uh, like literally 20 years of competition experience. Um, and he's a mastermind with coaching and programming as well. Um, it'll be really cool to see him and hopefully get a chance to meet him at Nationals. I'm excited. Um, but I think in order for my top three podium, I would have Tristan, Enrique, and then Mike T. Um, and then I think John Vasquez will be. Uh, close I think he will be a uh, close fourth and he has the potential to take third depending on you know Mike T's physical state um, and what he's end up able to end up putting up on the platform uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't count out John Vasquez to hit that um, top three podium spot for sure um, yeah wow this is uh, just just looking at these weight classes um, or just looking at these athletes I'm sorry on open powerlifting these are some of the most experienced lifters in the meet um, like, so you just mentioned John Vasquez. He started lifting when he was eight, his first competition. He, <laughs> he went, awesome, he's yeah. a WPA world championships when he was eight years old and won it. Um, and he's only 23 now, but if you look at his power, open power there's like 30 meets in here, something like this, that he's done. Uh, Mike T obviously has been lifting right. since 2003. Um, when he was 18, he's 37. Now his, you had to scroll for a while on his open power thing. It was like 50 deep. Um, Tristan Izorad started when he was 17. He's 25. Again, he's probably got 40 meets, 40 lines uh, in here on open powerlifting. And then Lugo, same thing, started when he was 14 um, in Texas, doing a ton of single ply, stuff like this. He actually, I think, has the deepest open powerlifting page of anyone on this uh, in this class. So um, definitely, these are all seasoned veterans. So I don't think you're going to catch any of them sleeping, even though you know, at least in the case of Lugo and, and, and Tristan, you know, they're just in their mid, they're both 25 years old. They've been competing forever. So, and then of course, John Vasquez, he's very young, still a junior, 23 years old. So um, very promising and bright future there. So definitely very exciting to see. You mentioned Mike T. He, de he definitely was, uh, had some issues um, with his injuries recently. And then 
I think he just posted something like two or three days ago that was like, hey, I really want it to be better, but it just doesn't seem like his back is going to cooperate. Uh, and he's like, I think he said he's still coming to Nats and everything, but um, it's it's a shame because we probably won't get to see his best performance. And we haven't seen a ton of squats posted out of him and stuff. Um, so, but his deadlift looks massive. So, and I'll just tell you guys, Mike T, if you listen to him on podcasts and stuff, you know, with RTS, obviously he's a legend in the game, you know, a uh, legendary coach, one of the best coaches uh, in the sport. And he gives so much information and knowledge back to the sport. But if you listen to him on podcasts, you kind of see one side of him. Wait till you meet him in person. He is hilarious. Like he is absolutely so funny. Uh, he's one of the funniest, just just best guys. Uh, I was telling you guys at the Laco barbecue last year, I was able to sit and, and at a table and just observe uh, some of the legendary coaches and Mike T everyone was like, just hanging on every word. Mike T was saying he was just cutting up everyone. Like it was so funny. Uh, so his, he's very professional on everything that you guys have probably seen from him. But when you see him in person, like, man, he's a hilarious dude, hilarious dude. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to hanging out with him, regardless of how he performs. He's one of the legends of the sport, you know, no shame in his game whatsoever. Uh, he, he can be proud of the career that he's put together and he still has a couple more years in the open. So it'll be exciting to see what he does, but yeah, good picks for you guys all around. Um, I think, yeah, we'll see if they can get close at 922. It seems like Tristan's got the fuel and the, and the fire to do it. Um, but you just never know with the Lugo and, and, and who knows what Mike T maybe he's playing head games with us all, you know, um, he's, he's a wily veteran in the sport. So who knows, maybe he's just doing the old bait and switch or something, the old rope dope We'll see. So, um, all right. That's going to be a very exciting one. Nonetheless, um, a lot of, uh, exciting things in that, in, in that group of lifters, like, especially like Caden Hush is going to bench something out of this world. So that'll be really fun to watch as well. So, all right. You guys have anything else you want to add on to one twenties? We got it. All right. Let's move on to the big boys. The super heavyweights, the 120 plus category. Um, we've got arguably one of the the greatest powerlifters of all time is gonna is has come over to powerlifting America and wants to make a run at going to worlds, and that's Ray Williams. Um, the qualifying total in this weight class, thanks to Jesus and Ray over the years, um, is pretty high. It's 10 13.5. Um, Ray Williams most recent meet that he did to qualify for this, he did 10 10, so he's right there. So there's a really strong chance that Ray Williams is going to hit the qualifying total and go and represent the United States at Worlds um, this year in Malta, which will be really cool to see. He's one of the legends in the sport. Um, if he squats a thousand pounds, everyone's going to go crazy. The room is going to the room is going to go wild, um, and so that's going to be really exciting. Behind him, he's he's Ray Williams, you know, like a god in the sport. So there's a pretty big gap behind him, um, but we do have. Jonathan Averill, who's coming up, he's got 877.5. I know he's coached by Ellis McLean, oh, one of the best people in the sport as well. Um, he's 28 years old, so 877.5 is, is his best total. Behind that, we've got, uh, looks like Braden Pierce with a 717.5. He's only done one meet, as, and he's 20 years old. Um, so it'll be very exciting to see what he might be capable of. And then behind that, we've got Kevin Dinn at a 647.5. Um, and then we got Matthew Buckbinder, 645. Matthew only started competing in his mid thirties, which that's same as me. So it's really cool to see someone jumping into the support, into the sport at that age and coming out. And again, he's going to be on the platform with one of the legends of the game in Ray Williams. So that's a really cool thing to see. And then the last place will be Tony Tillman, 570, uh, just based on their, their qualifying totals. He put up a 570. Only a 24-year-old, only done two meets, so a lot of room for improvement there, and so looking forward to see what that performance will show. All right, who wants to kick us off on this one with your picks? Um, I'll start us off. Ahead, um, yeah, we got Ray. Um, Ray's going to look – I mean, right now he's looking like the front runner unless something crazy happened that we don't know about. Um, yeah, he did 10-10 total in, pound, uh, in kilos uh, at his uh, local meet that he did to qualify. Um, and definitely looked like he had a little bit of a tank on them. Um, it would be awesome to see him uh, just total a little bit above that because the Carpino is 10, 13.5. You know, if I, I have pretty good confidence that he will be hitting above that. Um, I think it would also just be, it would be electric to see him squat 1,000 again. You know, we saw him squat 1,000 again at the VA Pro, uh, you know, a while ago. And I think that he def it definitely looks like it might be in the cards again at Nationals. It would just be, it would be awesome to see that, right? 
Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Seeing a thousand pound squat is pretty rare, but then you know I'd also have the chance to see it live, which would be really exciting. He did. He did um, hit really nine seventy. Yeah, he hit yeah. nine seventy in his uh, qualifying meet. So and it looked. I mean, there's very little footage of it out there, but if it's the one I saw, it looked pretty easy. Yeah, no, it definitely looked like he had room there. So I, I would would not be shocked if he takes a thousand for a ride to nationals, which would be awesome. Um, and then you know, coming up to clear up second place will likely be Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan has been increasing his total every single meet since he started. It looks like, um, and I would be excited to see what totals he might be able to break from that 900 kilo barrier, which means he's close to the thousand kilo barrier. Um, which is exciting. Um, you know, he's 28, so he definitely has potential to keep increasing that total. Um, I'll be excited to see what he puts up at the meet. Um, he has a pretty nice uh, bench and a pretty great pull as well. And uh, obviously a monstrous squat. So it'll be cool to see him compete as well. Uh, I got Jonathan taking second for sure. And then I uh, like the Braden Pierce uh, taking third, you know, young career. He's my age, 20, and he's just on one meet. Um, he's already totaled 717, which is a monstrous total for the first meet. So it'll be cool to see what he does as well. Um, it'll be a fun class. I mean, it's how can you not want to see Ray Williams compete? Um, you know, he's definitely going to be the star of the show. It will be awesome to see what he can do on the day. So I got Ray Williams winning, and I think he's going to hit that Carpino. All right. Good analysis there, man. You, you went deep on those. All right. Let's go to uh, the young man, Marcus. Yeah, sure. Um, and as as a young guy myself, you know, like when you first when I first got into powerlifting, I mean, Ray Williams was one of the first names that you hear. Um, and there's a, there's a very specific reason for that. I mean, he is definitely one of the best that has ever done it. And I have him taking this first place position, no problem. And I also have him taking the Carpino. Um, I just think that no matter where he goes, um, be it, you know, Malta, or, you know, let's say he doesn't hit the Carpino, but I doubt that it's going to be an entertaining performance from him nonetheless, uh, just to see what he's always capable of, um, because it's like watching a, a superhuman in the flesh. It's an absolute uh, pleasure to see something like that. Um, Jonathan specifically, I know that his training has been going uh, absolutely insane. Um, I know that he himself is going to hit some insane personal records um, because I know that he hit uh, a sub max um, a sub max deadlift that uh, tied his me PR about a few weeks ago. Um, so I know that he's going to be doing something great for himself. Um, but I just don't see him uh, closing the gap between himself and Ray, but you know, once again, just being able to put yourself in the position where you can stand and say that, you know, I came second place to, you know, the Ray Williams uh, is a feat in and of itself. Um, yeah. I have Ray taking first hitting the Carpino. Um, I have, you know, Jonathan, taking that second place and, you know, Braden third place. All right. Good perspective, man. Bringing in uh, the same with me. Like you just, you always hear these mythical stories of Ray Williams and it's like really cool that we're all going to get to see him or at least three of us will get to see him in person. Um, and Marcus, yeah, you're going to be missing out, but it's all right. We'll get really good footage of it. Um, so it, it won't be, so I'll be, I'll be watching. Yeah, exactly. We we'll have the SBD live stream, so you'll be able to watch, and and then hopefully you'll meet him next time. But uh, all right, Julia, go ahead and give us your picks. So um, just um, I agree with what everyone says. Um, I have Ray Williams hitting the Carpino total. I have him, you know, doing something absolutely spectacular. He's he's the kind of person that commands your respect and attention when he's lifting. And I think, you know, there were some huge um, dots coefficients put up at the Virginia Pro. Um, but when he was lifting, that was really, you know, you came to see Ray Williams squat a thousand pounds. Like that's, he's, when he's there, um, he's the show. And I can't wait to see what he puts up. I think it's going to be great. Um, I'm glad to see him coming back. Um, and yeah, just looking forward to that. I'm also um, really excited to see what, how Jonathan progresses. Um, he has a very high total. And I think, you know, he's a little bit in the shadow of Ray Williams because, you know, just who Ray is. But, um, you know, he has a lot of potential to improve. And um, he's already really, really strong. So it's going to be cool to see what he does here and how he progresses going forward. Um, 
And then I just want to shout out uh, Matthew because I started lifting when I was 26 and that's, you know, pretty late. Um, and it's always really cool to see people who might not have started super young, but still um, coming out and doing these big meets, um, showing people that powerlifting is a lifelong sport and um, you can be competitive um, at any age. Um, so um, those are my picks. I think we got Ray hitting the Carpino total and then Jonathan in second and then I'll take Braden um, in third. Yeah, and how cool is this going to be for Braden? I mean, standing on the podium next to Ray Williams uh, in only his second meet ever. Um, that's just one of these cool things that you only are going to get at Powerlifting American Nationals. It's a rare sweet spot that we have where we have super high end, super high caliber, like world's level athletes. And then the depth behind them enables it so that we have people like in their, in their second meet are going to be staying on the podium with Ray Williams. I mean, I just think if you're a lifter out there, let, take advantage of this time in power of America's history, because before too long, you know, every class is going to be killers like one through 10. And it'll be really hard to even like, you know, the qualifying totals to even get to nationals will go up. Um, but we're in this really great period where I think you're going to see, you're going to get to hang out with a lot of really cool people that otherwise maybe wouldn't be at a nationals if we had, you know, the depth of competition in power of team America, um, that we've had in the past with the other federations. So, so yeah, I think, uh, it's a, makes for a really like fun experience where, um, you get people from all different age groups and all different uh, experience levels and stuff. And then a, a handful of like, just absolute goats in the sport, uh, not a handful, like 10 of them, you know? Um, and, and so, uh, yeah, it's just going to be a fun time. Everyone's going to get to hang out at the Laco barbecue. Um, and you know, at the hotel throughout, there's a really nice, uh, restaurant and bar right up, right outside the doors of the ballroom. So everyone can just be kind of chilling and get to know each other and stuff. So really looking forward to it. All right. You guys have anything? Let's give a little recap on just this session. I think, you know, obviously we capped it off with Ray Williams. He's definitely going to steal the show. That's definitely what I'm looking forward to. Um, I think the 120s battle is going to also be something that's going to be really fun to watch. Um, Aluella Bowden, I think, is going to steal the show. Michelle Robbins, I'm really curious to see, you know, what she's going to do as well. Um, Aliza is a crowd favorite. She's like one of my favorite people in powerlifting. I love traveling and, and seeing her at meets and stuff. And so we're going to have a blast no matter what she does on the platform. So yeah, that's probably what I'm looking forward to most uh, on the, you know, day three, Sunday, the only, the one session that we have. What are you guys thinking about? Go ahead, Sam. You ready? Oh yeah. Uh, I think, I think I'm very excited to see Ray, obviously, um, see what performance he puts up and then I mean, um, you really can't go wrong with the 120 battle either. I think that'll be very exciting to watch. Um, and I'm very excited to see uh, what Tristan's able to put up this year um, and see him fight for that uh, Carpino. Uh, I think it's been an awesome session, though. I mean, everybody loves seeing just massive weights shifted around on all three. I mean, we're going to be seeing 500-plus benches. You know, we're going to be seeing 900-plus squat, likely. Um, you know, 700-plus deads, a lot of them, just loads of them, maybe even 800. Um, never know. Uh, I think it'll be awesome. It's going to be a sight to see, and I can't wait. Totally. All right, Marcus? Um, me specifically, I'm really excited for this session because, I mean, this is, you know, I think, you know, what, what powerlifting is all about. I mean, you know, you have, you know, these really tight battles with, like, the lightweight lifters here and, like, nothing against them, but, you know, there's there's something special about seeing these people lifting insane amounts of weight that you just simply wouldn't be able to touch. Like, I know that there will never be a time in my life that a thousand pounds will be on my back and um i just think that it's going to be absolutely crazy um and i'm really excited for all of this totally totally yeah good point man uh i i agree it's just seeing massive weights being moved it's always a blast and i can tell you i was there when jesus squatted 992 last year and the room absolutely went psycho i mean it was it was the coolest thing i've ever seen and so if ray can <laughs> replicate that you know and jesus was like banging his chest afterwards like it was i'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about it <laughs> and so i can only imagine this year with the meat being bigger more lifters more spectators um and ray williams possibly putting up like something in the thousand range 
it's the place is just going to go ape shit and it's going to be amazing. So go ahead, Julia, what are you looking forward to most in this session? Well, um, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing Ray Williams back on the platform. Um, yeah. And just doing his thing. I think that's going to be incredible to watch. I mean, I still remember the Arnold when he squatted, I think it was 1080. Um, mm -hmm. I, it was wild. The The atmosphere in, in the sea pod was just, um, it was crazy. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I think there's a really good mix of um, new people coming up, uh, younger lifters who have a lot of potential and we're going to discover a lot of new people. We're going to have a lot of new names um, and that's going to be exciting, but there's also a lot of veterans who are going to be doing their thing. Um, and I, I think that that, that mix is um, going to make it uh, truly unique and entertaining. And um, I'm really, I'm really just looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, the battle in the, um, in the one twenties is going to be, it's going to be one to watch too. Sure. For sure. Yeah. I think that, I think that you nailed it though. It's just like this, this range of experience and, um, skill levels and stuff like that. I think you kind of, when you see stuff like this, it's kind of like seeing, like we're talking about people like Mike T that have been competing since 2003. And they and then we got someone in that weight class, like John Vasquez, who's only 23 years old. It's really cool to kind of see like the torch being passed down to the next generation as well. You know, um, Bonica is not going to be here, but Luella is going to be stepping up as a 17 year old, you know, stuff like this, um, where it's, yeah, great storylines throughout very compelling lifting, um, absolutely elite of the elite at the high end, uh, in every, in almost every single weight class. Um, and then just a great mix beneath that of like fun storylines, battles, big ventures, masters, lifters in the open, junior sub juniors in the open so very cool all right well unless you guys have anything else you want to add um i got one more thing to say go ahead let's bring it up um ray, uh, ray williams if you ever watch this if you ever see this um i will be your personal cameraman for the rest of your life because trust me if you have someone to record your lifts the way that like jesus does you would be absolutely insane but you know yeah I would like to spectate that myself personally. <laughs> yeah. So Marcus is volunteering to be your personal videographer <laughs> for the rest of your life um, because he really wants to see you pump out a ton of amazing content um, because, you know, you're just like walking gold. Um, and if someone just needs <laughs> yeah. to get a good, a good iPhone on you and capture it and start posting that stuff consistently. Um, and there's no reason why you couldn't have like a million followers. So and the thing is, it's like, he's not even, he's not even like a gamer who just doesn't post his lifts um to like you know you know try to get all the other competition off their feet and he's just i just don't think that he really understands that enough yeah i just from don't think he cares <laughs> from a different generation yeah his, his lifts speak for themselves and his numbers he's already cemented himself in history he doesn't really need to post and stuff to to do that but i know that he recently started a new job he's running a gym gyms you know they get filled up based on social media and marketing and stuff like this so fingers crossed, he'll be up in his social media game, uh, you know, in the coming months. So we'll definitely are going to plaster him all over power in America, Marcus. So make sure you're clipping everything and <laughs> getting ready to write a big caption for us for uh, Ray's performance. But all right. Well, thank you all for being here so much. Um, Julia, you know, in the week of competing and everything like this, that you took out so much time for us. Really, really greatly appreciate it. Provide your insights as a someone who's actually going to be there as well. Um, and just one of the really smart people in our sport. And then, um, Sam, same thing, like you're going to be traveling, you're balancing school, and then you're going to be out there with us in Austin. And then same thing with you, Marcus, I know you got a really busy work, uh, and school life as well. So, um, really greatly appreciate this is a, this is a lot of work to do this. I think we all learned some lessons on like how long this takes and everything <laughs> like that. Um, but it was super fun. I'm, I'm so happy to do this with you all. And, uh, we'll definitely have to do something after power of the American nationals as well. And so with that, we'll wrap up the Power of Teen America podcast preview show for Power of Teen America Nationals. Make sure you tune in. All the action will be starting. Uh, it looks like the action will be starting 4 p.m. this Friday, 4 p.m. Central Time. So that's 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and what is that, like 2, 2 p.m. On the, on the West Coast? So make sure you're checking out the SBD Apparel 
YouTube channel where it'll be streamed live. The, this meet is presented by SBD. So it's going to be a really high quality live stream, a great viewing experience. They've already got the thumbnails up so you can already get your notifications turned on. So you don't miss any of the action if you're not going to be there in person. Also shout out to our other main sponsor, which is Aleco. Um, but with SBD and Aleco, they're our partners in this and uh, we couldn't do it without them. So thank them very much. Um, and of course the Aleco barbecue is basically like uh, Meg Scanlon when she first posted uh, her first comment, when we announced the meet was can't wait for the Aleco barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> and then also <laughs> I'll lift some weights. Uh, but yeah, so really cool. So, all right, well, thank you all. Uh, and thanks to everyone who tunes in and listens to power of the America podcast. Um, really appreciate you. And with that, peace out.